So let's talk about the two types of launches first. There's forward launch and then there's reverse launch. The difference being that one, in the forward launch, you're facing away from the glider, so you're actually going to be moving forward to generate that airspeed required for that wing to come up. And in a reverse launch, you have the airspeed enough to get that glider off the ground. So again, if you caught it, the determining factor between doing a forward launch and a reverse launch is simply the airspeed. And I've found that for most paragliders, it's around six miles an hour as the threshold or the line where you could do either or. So six miles an hour is just enough for that glider to come up and really stay over your head without much effort from your legs. The reason why we might avoid doing a forward launch in winds greater than six miles an hour is that as soon as that glider comes up, it goes through what we call the power zone, or the zone that is in a drogue chute position. If you imagine a drogue chute coming out behind a drag racer, that is the position that we're trying to get through. And if the winds are too strong and we go to inflate our glider, as it travels through that power zone, it'll pull us backwards and potentially we could trip and fall on our backs. And well, that's just not very cool. So really we don't want to do a forward in winds greater than six miles an hour. I would say that you could get away with a forward in winds eight miles an hour or so, but as a newer pilot, we really want to stay six miles an hour or under. Now we wouldn't want to do a reverse launch in winds that are less than six miles an hour because now you're having to do a, a massive sled pull to get this wing to come up and off the ground. And again, you could trip and stumble and break a propeller. So we want to set ourselves up for success. So that's why we're going to do a forward launch in winds six mile an hour or less and a reverse launch in six miles an hour or greater. Again, this is part one, so this is just going to be clipping in for a forward launch. So you'll have to stay tuned for part two. And a quick disclaimer for you guys at home that are looking to get into the sport. I am not to be taken as your instructor through this video camera, right? I cannot give you live feedback calls, so I highly recommend going and getting a USPPA rated instructor to give you live feedback calls so that you can stay safe and you can solidify those skills that much easier and more efficiently. For this reason, I highly recommend Aviator PPG down in Lake Wales, Florida. I've been teaching with them for the last three and a half years, and I really appreciate the curriculum that they have set up down there, as well as the heart that they have for the students that walk in that door. So check them out. I've linked them in the description below so that you can get easy access to their website. So without further ado, guys, let's go ahead, get you on my forehead, and let's clip in for a forward launch. So with a forward launch, I'm gonna go ahead and step in between. You'll notice that I have these risers fairly close together, and it just makes my life easier. As a lazy paramotor pilot, I don't have to go reaching way over there or way over there to grab my risers and my bridles. I can just kind of bend it over right here. So before I even go to touch my risers, guys, I'm gonna check my gear. So I've got five connection points on this harness. I'm gonna check my leg, visually, physically, and mentally inspecting each buckle, testing physically, visually, just looking at it, make sure that the buckles are in decent shape, and mentally being present as I check these things. So I've got a leg, a leg, a waist, a chest, and a chin strap as well. So I'm gonna make sure that I check my chin strap, make sure my helmet is good to go. Alrighty, we do these checks because oftentimes when we're in a rush to get in the air, as we often find ourselves in, you know, that sun is setting, we've got to get in the air or our window is going to close. In the process, we can miss a couple of things. So the quickest way is actually being slow and meticulous about it and setting the pace for a good smooth launch. Not a rushed launch, but a smooth launch. And it starts here, it starts now with picking up our risers. So with an underhand grip, I'm gonna go ahead and take a knee and I'm gonna pencil grip pinch my bridle right above, right at the neck. And then I'm gonna pick it up and I'm gonna check to make sure that the A's are on the top of every other line going all the way to my wing back there. All right. Once I do that, I can flip it and then I can clip it. So these are aviator terms. These are what I've been using for the last three and a half years. And you'll find what works best for you and your instructor might have a different way of doing this. Again, I'm gonna pick it up with an underhand grip, check it. 
rotate it or flip it and then I'm going to clip it all right now once we're clipped in we're gonna go back through our harness so I'm gonna check my legs leg waist chest chin visually physically and mentally now I'm gonna go back down with gravity and I'm gonna start with my carabiners making sure they're closed and locked this is a crucial step guys as I mentioned before, we have a tendency to rush in the air sometimes. I've heard of, of pilots launching with this sort of setup. You can get in the air with this sort of setup, but I can't guarantee that you'll get back down safely. Um, that's spooky, right? So we want to make sure that bridle is in, that door is closed and locked. Don't mess around with it. The next thing we're going to come to with gravity here is our trims. So on this glider, this is a Kona 2, the trims at a neutral setting is actually all the way in. So I'm going to make sure my trims are at neutral. And then I'm going to pick up this rear riser that my brakes are attached to right above the stitched square just above my cam buckle. So there's my stitched square. I'm going to find the rear riser that lines up with that. The reason why I do that is sometimes our risers can be all twisted and funky, especially if you've got complicated riser or, or loose risers. You can just find this last piece of riser here, lift it up, and we're going to inspect our risers to make sure that they are square and straight. What you're looking for is just something that looks clean. You know, that would be something that we're looking for that we want to catch before we just go ahead and grab our A's and try to inflate. So we're going to go ahead and sort that out. And then attached to my rear riser are my brake handles. And I like to grab these guys from the inside so that my knuckles could touch and I'm going to peel off the toggle magnet from the riser magnet and as I do this I'm going to watch my brake lines fall through the pulleys freely and clearly there's one there's two this is another crucial step guys if my brake line is not free and clear to the pulley and it's not traveling through because of a friction knot or something like that when I go to pull if it's really bad, it will not return and it'll be stuck in a pulled position. Obviously not a great scenario. So we want to make sure those brake lines are clear to the pulley. And now you'll notice that I'm holding the magnets of the toggles in my pointer and middle finger with the brake lines coming upwards. All right. In other words, when I go to release those A's, these brake lines are traveling right up towards the wing and I've got control of this magnet so that I can easily stow it when the time comes in flight. So I've got the brake handles in my hands and I'm gonna go, I like to say, finger guns to the holsters, straight down our thighs and we're gonna find the front most A's. In other words, the A's that are closest to our shins or the center A's. So these two A's, these split A's as they're sometimes called, or the parent A's as they're also sometimes called, you'll find out what terminology you like to use, but I usually just say front A's, are connected to the center portion of your wing. The center third of your wing are these four lines. And the reason why we hold on to these two only and not all of them is because if we were to hold on to all of them, it's a lot more wing to inflate all at once. So we're just going to hold on to the centermost A's and let the battens do the pressurizing throughout the wing as that wing comes up. So I'm just going to grab the frontmost A's. I'm going to lift up my thumbs and kind of separate the rest of the riser here. I'm going to get my knuckles together. I'm going to come straight up. I'm going to come straight out. Just like so. As I do this, you'll see that I am holding on to the A's with a very loose sort of clamp on my thumbs against my palms and there's a number of ways to do this you could pinch the A's like so the reason why I don't prefer pinching is because sometimes our thumbs can get stuck in the mallions like so and also a sympathetic muscle reaction tends to happen with a newer pilot where they don't want to release the A's when the time comes or it's another thing to think about with this loose cradle method as I call it I'm making sure that the mallion is against my skin on the webbing between my thumb and pointer finger. And the reason why I want to make sure that's true is because of symmetry. From this point on, symmetry matters so much all the way through our control phase. So we got those bridles on the webbing of our thumb and forefinger. 
And when the time comes to release, I'm going to inflate by bringing my arm up, and then when it comes time to release, all I have to do is kind of open up my thumb, and it'll naturally place itself right where it belongs in this zone right here as the wing comes up. So that is how we clip in for a forward. I'm going to go ahead now and find my center. And as I do this, we've taken a lot of time to set out that wing meticulously. As I do this, I don't want to mess up my wing layout by driving forward too hard and pulling that wing across the field, closing that leading edge that was opened up so nicely. So I'm going to find my center gently, just using the weight of the lines, just the weight of the lines there. And I can kind of bob my hand forward and backward to find that center. And then we're going to step towards the tension we feel. This is a poor example because all of our lines are going to the same spot behind us. But when that wing is laid out, it'll give us a lateral feel as to which direction I need to step in order to find that center spot. Okay. Once we do that, we take two steps back. This gives us space to move through freely and build momentum before actually hitting that wing and jolting it into the air. So I hope this is a helpful tutorial for someone who is brand new to the sport, looking to learn the ropes or lines rather, and I hope it helps demystify what they're looking at. And if you're someone that has been doing this sport for a little while but needs a little refresher, I hope this jogs your memory. Before you guys go, I'd love for you to check out my Patreon as a link in the description below. I offer some unique benefits there, like the opportunity to connect one-on-one -on -one with me virtually where we can kind of debrief some footage of you and figure out how you can progress in the sport and achieve your goals. While I enjoy making these videos, I really love connecting with you guys one-on-one, -on -one, face to face. It's a lot more fun than just talking to a camera. So if you guys are interested in that, go check that out. Anyway, guys, thank you for tuning in again. My name is Micah Stevens. This is Lifted PPG. Don't forget to take a deep breath and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.